2011 Apostolic Gathering where it was said as long as it was not said by the Alpha and the Omega it's not conclusive are you understanding me it doesn't matter how powerful that which could have been as long as it wasn't it wasn't said by God. You will make it in life. There has to come a time in your life when you realize that that when God says something it overrides what was ever said before. If people say that you, you are a failure, you are this and that, you never make it in life, you are good for nothing. You will never have anything. You will never get married. You will never have a job. You will never have. You will never get up. You will never get back. Irregardless of who has said it. In this conference, you will have an opportunity to hear the voice of the Lord speaking into your life. And you must understand all these men that will be speaking in these meetings, they, they are not Father Christmas to come and drop a, a present in your life and still remain dealing with the same things that you have been dealing with. The devil is a liar. This is not a Father Christmas service. This is a, 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 a destiny. You must understand that God has released midwives in your lives throughout this conference that are there at your point of your breakthrough and they'll make sure that what God is about to give you, you are not going to have a still poor. You will have something. Oh God, the <laughs> devil is. Talo kanya kuri mudimu. O kolo te ban na baba butali. Baba tile mona kanya kuri melo kuri. Ha belaka bata nete hata kuri. Ha ona kuri sinya kala mewa kuri belaka moko chaneti. You, you must understand that God has released midwives in your lives that are going to make sure that when you push when you push they are not going to be waiting to kill what is about to come out of your life but are going to you must 
I can guarantee you after this service, somebody is going to walk back home carrying something he has never had in his life. The devil is a liar. You are not going back home empty-handed, but you are going back home with your breakthrough, with your testimony. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. I believe tonight we'll be addressing Hannah, Hannah, who has been going to the temple day in and day out and has been coming back empty. She has made up her mind that after this service, I'm not going back home to be mocked again. I'm not going back home for people to laugh at me when I go back home. <laughs> I'm not talking to the right people here. I'm talking to Hannah. Hannah, people have laughed at you throughout 2011. I keep we live at about anything. Get like we are Hannah, Hannah, but about what Serile, Mahayo Yotte, Yat 2011. They have made a mockery of you. But jealous at Sahokawain. They have used the absence of some things in your life to make a mockery of your God. But it is a little talk or last thing about Sulumbao, or about Roha Kemudu Muaha. And you also, you have been asking yourself, has God forsaken me? Why are things happening the way they are happening? Is this another year? I'm ending the year empty, disappointed, frustrated. Somebody said, that's not my portion. It's not my portion. It's not my portion. Tell the neighbor, it's not my portion. This is my time. It is my time. When Hannah entered the temple, she made up her mind. I've come to provoke you. Throughout these meetings, don't just come to this house as if it's another conference, it's another meeting, it's another service. No, no, no. You must have the Hana attitude. You must make up your mind. I'm sick and tired of jumping, jumping and going back home miserable. Make up, make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. I'm sick and I'm tired of clapping hands. And then when I go back home, I'm crying. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. That when I leave this house, when I leave this house, when I leave this house, I will know. I will know. I will know without a shadow of doubt. That in nine months time what Penina could not see in my life she will see in all those that have concluded your life and have said she will never be anything in life after this conference after this conference 
You see, miracles do not advertise themselves. The, the don't, miracles do not need an advert. They advertise themselves. You don't even have to open your mouth. You see, when a woman is pregnant, she doesn't have to go to the voice newspaper and then stands on page three and say, I'm pregnant to tell your enemies. You just have to remain quiet. Keep doing your normal things. Keep doing your normal things. You don't have to open your mouth. Just keep cleaning the church. Keep going to work. Miracles have a way of announcing themselves. They will cause your enemies to tell you what has happened to you. They say, what is this that I see in you? <laughs> it says, are you, are you pregnant? What is this that I see? How come your nose is growing big? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You see, when God blesses you, you don't need to talk about it. The blessing has a way of making your enemies talk about what the Lord has done. Sometimes, can I talk to Elizabeth? Elizabeth, sometimes you are carrying something that you don't even know is in your room. So you need a service like this one to cause something to jump inside of you. That says the Lord. I realize that that statement is very powerful. It does not say that said the Lord. It says that says the Lord. He, he said Ari, he say, Ari, and he still say. Ibile unto to elete wa bua. He did not just say, and then he kept quiet. Haka abua aba adidima. He say, ur wa bua. And he is, in other words, meka ma fukwa mawi. The God that is about to bring things to pass in your life. It's not a silent God. He is still speaking. That's why some things have to come to pass before the end of this year. Because when God is still speaking, He is still doing. Everything that you see is as a result of a spoken, a, a release of a word. He spoke and there was a sun. He spoke and there were mountains. He spoke and there was rivers. He spoke there were elephants. Just him speaking. Things came to pass. How much more if he was to speak right now? How much more would happen in your life? I want somebody to get ready because when God opens up his mouth, the impossible will become possible. When God opens up his mouth, what was, the, what was not there is going to be there. That's why I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disappointed at how 2011 has been. I know within the remaining few days of 2011, God can say something and it has the power to come to pass.
ke gona ka moga ke khatale gore 2011 o ntsantse jang monna kwa nyane ye setse modimo o ka bua sengwe sa be se diragala he can speak a house into existence where there's no house o ka bua ntlo e be nna ha no he can speak a husband where there's no husband o ka bua re wa lapa ha go sena re wa lapa if i was you and i was single i said speak lord <laughs> Sorry. Exodus chapter number 1 reading from verse number 1 Kaolo ele ya ntla go simola mo temane nyane The Bible said these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt every man and his household came with Jacob and he, he begins to mention Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad and Asher and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls for Joseph was in Egypt already and Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and walked exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king, somebody say, a new king, over Egypt, which knew not Joseph and what he had done. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it came to pass that when the when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh's treasure cities, Pentham, Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. Somebody said, The devil is a liar. <laughs> But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. They were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made them, ooh, just a second. And, and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve them with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, mortar in bricks and in all manner of service in the field, all their service wherein they made them save with, with vigor. And the, the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shepherd and the name of the other was Poor. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stool, if it be of a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then ye shall leave. But the midwives feared God. Somebody said, Lord, plant people that fear God. In my life, before they kill my male child. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men, children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this and have saved the male children, the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the non believers, for, for they are lively, they are strong. When it comes to the point of them giving birth, the Egyptian women, they die. But the Israelite, when they give birth, they don't even need a midwife. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives. And the people multiplied and worked very mighty. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people saying, every son that is born, you shall cast in the river. And every daughter you shall save alive. May the Lord bless the reading. Of his word. Throughout the sessions that I'll take, I'll take three sessions, I will base my teaching 
on this very passage of scripture. God had spoken to Abraham and told him that your descendants will sojourn to a strange land. He tells Abraham that your descendants will go into a strange land and uh, there there will be slaves for 400 years. And Abraham He speaks to Abraham when Abraham is facing a difficult situation in his life. He speaks to Abraham at a time when Abraham had given up hope of ever having a child. He speaks to Abraham and tells him of what he will be in his future, even before his future shows up. Now, Abraham becomes like uh, any of us that is under this roof, under my voice. He begins to analyze the word of God using logical analysis. He, he begins to use human understanding to interpret thus sayers. The Lord. He, he tells the Lord that yes, I know that you you want to make me a great man. Now, according to the understanding of Abraham. If God was going to make him a great man, it would not be on account of himself. Because he has already passed the age of ever giving birth to children. His wife is having a problem of menopause and also not just menopause but barrenness. So he begins to explain the, how this thing is going to happen. So he tells God, I understand you're going to make me a great man. So he measures the prophecy that thus says the laws based on his servant that was in his house. Because Eliezer was a, a great servant of Abraham who had a family of his own. And he had big, a big, big number of children. So when God spoke to Abraham and told him that you will be a, a, a father of great nation. You, you will have descendants without measure. When God was speaking to Abraham, he says, well, uh, I know how you are going to bring it to pass. It is through my servant Eliezer, whom now is no longer a servant, but I've adopted him as a son. He, he says, if God is going to bring this way to pass, I think he means this very, very servant of mine that has saved me so faithfully. It is through my servant that God is going to make me a great, a great, great man. And God says, no, I'm 
not going to make you through. I'm not going to make you a great person through somebody else. I mean you. Yeah, no, all level the same. All the cows are going to be made. Mo Jimu Omarari, Araha Mo Jimu Aya Kun Tira Mo Na Yomo Kolo. Kora Kora Kun Tira Ka Eliaza. Well, Long Kora Esa Te Ela Mo Tanka Wami. Anti Rete Lo Ba Kalele Lele. Me Mo Jimu Arinya Kya Kun Tira Jalo Kawe. Many a times when we come in a prophetic environment, in a prophetic service, and God begins to speak great things over our lives many a times we count ourselves we tell ourselves no god does not mean me he means the person next to me there is no way out god can bring this way to pass in my life most cases we rule ourselves out because of what is happening in our lives he tells Abraham, he says, I, I know you love your servant and you are prepared to, 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 to shift up what I'm about to do in your life, in his life. But before you can use your circumstances as an excuse why I'm going to bless you, I have come to tell you, Abraham, that what is impossible with man is possible with God. Mudimu arke aite Abraham hor orata mchango agaru ibile osetu obata loko tsa sekring kia sekonela hor osi fiti sete goro ene me mudimu ari nia kia agudira tsese sa kona kale mavu tsolumba agu hor tsa kona kale Abraham. He he rules himself out. We capellant. He tells himself there is no way out. This can happen to me. Aragona tsela yese sekanti rakala. I'm too old. My wife. Is barren and too old. He uses what is happening in his life to determine the power of the word of God. He, he tells himself there is no way out. This way can be fulfilled in my life. He counts himself out. The devil is a liar. Every time God speaks, he will speak contrary to what is happening in your life. When God speaks, he speaks opposite to what is happening in your life. He tells Abraham, I will make you great. I'm going to make you a father of many nations. He, he releases such a powerful prophetic word. And yet Abraham is facing a challenge of barrenness. He, that's why somebody said, that sayest the Lord. It, it has to be God. Somebody said, that sayest the Lord. It, it has to be God to speak. Contrary to what is happening in my life, it has to be God. It can't be my uncle. It can't be my father. It can't be my supervisor. It can't be my husband. It has to be God. It's when it's on the mudim. Abu Akatano, let's see the Rakalang, Mobut Solombame, Hakaki and Narre, Hakaki and Namalume, Hakaki and Namangan, Hakaki and Opeo Sikanalina. It's when it's on the mudim. It has to be God. It's when it's on the mudim. Speak in my finances. It has to be God. To speak in my career, it has to be God. To speak in my marriage, it has to be God. To speak in my marriage, it has to be God. 
has to be God to speak to in my health. It has to be God. It, it has to be God to speak over my family. It has to be God to speak over my ministry. It, it has to be God. Because this God, when He speaks, He calls those things that are not to become. It has to be God. Somebody said it has to be God. You see, when God speaks, He makes a way where there is no way. It, it has to be God. If my year is going to end better than last year, if my year I'm going to end stronger than last year, it has to be God. God has to speak. How much I am here with hella butuka when I look at all fitting. How much I am here with hella. When he speaks, Lazarus comes out of the tomb. When he speaks, when he speaks, cripples walk. When he speaks, the blind see. When he speaks, the deaf hear. When he speaks, when he speaks, curses break. When he speaks, barren homes have babies. He speaks to Abraham, and Abraham says, This cannot happen to me. I have ruled myself out of this. He he, he rules on himself out of what God had ruled him into. As if that was not all. One day God comes to him and tells him, your wife, your wife will be a mother of baby. You see, the problem, Bishop, the problem with believers is that when they are going through stuff, they shift things in their lives. That which is supposed to be for posterity that is supposed to be for future generations. They take it and place it on Eliezer. That which is supposed to be for their children. And simply because they are short sighted, they cannot see that Isaac is coming. They will take that which belongs to Isaac and put it on Eliezer. You must understand there are things that you shift and you cannot shift them back. So God tells Abraham that I'm not talking about Eliezer before you make the mistake of Shifting your future. It is from your loins. From your loins. I will bless you. It is from your loins. That your nations will come from. And Abraham says. Where it is from my loins. Then I must start doing something about it. Then he sleeps with Haggai. Because now God says, from your loins. So he decides to sleep with Haggai. Because according to the mentality of Abraham, from my loins, if my wife cannot give me something, then I must get it from her. 
Haggai. You see, the enemy wants you to be impatient. So that from your impatience, you complicate your future. The enemy wants you to be impatient. So that you make a hasty decision. The enemy, Maba, the enemy, Maba, he wants to make sure you take the wrong decision now. So that when God blesses you, you will not celebrate fully. So that on your wedding day, on your wedding day, you'll be dancing, but watching. Are you understanding me? He, he wants you to make a mistake now. So that tomorrow the mistake haunts you. But Samba is coming from my loins. Samba is coming from my loins. My breakthrough is coming from my loins. You see, the problem with most of us is that when God releases a word, when God releases a word, we, we, we want to help him achieve that weight. We want to help him achieve that weight. So we bring in Haggai into the picture. Somebody say it's not coming from Haggai. It's coming from within you. So we always want to attach Haggai so that Mudimu to say bye bye trusa. So that God helps those who help themselves. Are you understanding me? The enemy wants you to look around, not to look up. Are you understanding me? When God releases a weight, the posture is to look up and not to look around. You must be careful of shortcuts. Are you understanding me? Tell the person, do not take a hasty decision. Don't take a hasty decision. I know you're going to get married to Jane, but take it, take your time. Take your time. Look up, not look around. Yes, the SMS has already been uh, sent. Yes, praise the Lord. Why does the enemy do that to us? He, he wants to make sure that your life is lived in a predictable manner. Where the results are determined. The enemy wants to make sure that he makes you look at where you are and conclude your life based on where you are. The enemy wants to look, make sure that you look at your background and use your background 
background. If you are coming from a poor family, he says you will be poor. How to the enemy wants to use your age to determine the outcome of your life. He says you are above 40. So he has concluded you will never get married. That is a, that is a predictable outcome. Predictable outcome. He uses the age of Abraham and the age of Sarah and predicts the outcome. He says at this age you cannot have a he uses the age of Sarah to predict an outcome. But I've come to tell somebody today. I have come to tell somebody today that the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Where I am, what is happening in my life cannot change what God has is about to bring into my life. My age is not a determining factor as to what I should have in life. My salary will not determine my blessing. Where I am will not determine my blessing. The family I was born from will not determine my blessing. He he uses Odirisa the circumstances of Abraham Abraham to determine the outcome of their lives. He uses the age of Abraham. Abraham to tell him you have passed the age of childbearing. This is, this is the short-sightedness of the enemy. He does not know the power of thus says the Lord. He, chapter number one, brings a prophecy to fulfillment. That tells me when God releases a weight, it will come to pass. No matter how long. Are you with me? Number two. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. That is a message on its own. He is not a man. In other words, the fact that he is not a man without even us talking about that he should not lie. Just saying that God is not a man is enough to silence your witches. Tell the person that you God is not a man. When you realize that God is not a man, in other words, he is not subjected to what man is subjected to. He is not bound by the limitations of man. There are people that are very powerful. But they will die in spite of the fact that they are powerful. There are people that are in high positions but they are governed by limitations that you and I are limited to. This God is not a man. 
mwetimu yo hasemu utu. He is not a man that he should lie. Hasemu utu mwaka aka. Neither the son of man that he should change his mind. Ibile hasemu ruamu utu mwaka fetu la mwokopuru. So when God releases a weight, yanu hamu utimu akolola lefu. He does not need the human resource manager in your office to decide what God is about to do in your life. When he releases a weight, he will not consult your neighbors. He will not consult your enemies. He will not consult. He will not consult anybody. He will not consult anybody. Are you understanding me? He is not a man. When God makes up his mind that you will be blessed it doesn't matter who hates you you will be blessed when God says you will be promoted even if you do not have certificate when God says you will have